God said to me, when you say, I will never, when you judge somebody, you say that they're never going to change. Therefore, you never have to be reconciled to them. And he said, is that what you want me to say about you? Hey, everybody, welcome to today's episode of Conversations with John and Lisa. And we are so excited. We have this amazing topic we're going to be talking about today. And I'm going to let Lisa set it up for you. But before we get there, let's talk about the Messenger family of podcasts. We have got, let's talk about it with sons and daughters, right, Lisa? We've got the godmothers with the godmother, Lisa Bevere. And um, today, uh, we just want to encourage you to please rate and review and subscribe to the show. Now, if you leave a review, you might get it read on the air, and we're going to do just that. And that is coming from Laura J1218. I'm just always curious about what these numbers mean in That's people's just names. because other Laura's had already taken it over. Got it. She had to put numbers in for her last name. Well, Laura says this. I absolutely love John and Lisa. They've spoken to our church several times. I listen to everything and anything they produce. That's amazing. Thank you for being diligent and walking out the giftings God has given you. And thank you for sharing all your wisdom. That is the wisdom of God. You have blessed me tremendously, and I look forward to hearing more. Thank you so much, Laura. But as you know, we're just seeking God like you are, and we are so thankful that he gives us words that be, to be able to strengthen his people. So Lisa, Drum roll. What are we talking about today, baby? Yeah, we, uh, we're going to need wisdom on this topic. We are going to be talking about cancel culture. Okay. And if Yikes. by any chance you don't know what cancel culture is, I'm going to just read to you the definition I pulled out. It is a contemporary phrase used to refer used to refer to a form of ostracization. So like you're ostracizing people, you're labeling them, whether it's online, social media, or in person, the subject is canceled. And that is where the expression cancel culture comes from, it has a negative connotations. It's used in debates on free speech and censorship. The notion of cancel culture is a variant of a term called call out culture, where they were just kind of like, hey, we're gonna call you out on that. But now it's gotten really, really, really aggressive. Some critics argue that cancel culture has a chilling effect on public discourse, meaning people are afraid to have conversations. And you know, I want, I want to just actually pause a moment there because wow. I love the writings of Dr. Jordan Peterson. And he says, if people can't talk or talk things through, they can't think. If people are so afraid of saying something that might be taken wrong, they might be trapped in wrong thinking. So I hate that cancel culture keeps people of different opinions from coming to the table and having constructive conversations. Others argue that cancellation are, they are, it's a form of free speech. I don't believe that at all. But anyway, this is something that is epidemic right now in our culture. You know, we hear about it, Lisa, and the, what you just read makes it even more horrifying. And it is horrifying because what it does is it takes individuality away also. In other words, a person's not able to now think freely and reason freely and pray freely and seek God freely because you have to conform to whatever society is putting the pressure on you to become. And if you don't, you're ostracized, as you said. And it used to be as Americans, babe, we could sit down and we could have a healthy conversation if we disagreed. And when we were done with that conversation, we got it from the table, said we're still believers, we're still brothers and sisters, or we're still Americans, and we don't agree on this. Yeah but I still care about you. Yeah. Today, when you're ostracized, it's like care goes out the window. Yeah. Now you're actually become somebody who is attacked. You are no longer protected by your fellow brother or sister, and it's really scary. Yeah. It's, it's creating a it's lot a of suicides of right now in yeah. teenagers. Yeah, it, well, not just teenagers, but everyway. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's a form of shunning, Yeah. and it's just not healthy. So was there ever a time that you were canceled? Yeah. <laughs> Ever a time? You, 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 I should say, which time? But, but canceled means completely cut off. Well, I mean, Lisa, I remember when you and I were young in the ministry, we went to a church and uh, uh, I was asked to speak a couple nights in the conference and you were doing the women's uh, part of the conference. And it was a, the most influential church of the area. And I, God was just beginning to f form my, my, my 
my understanding of the healthy fear of the Lord, which is not to be scared of God. It's to be terrified of being away from him. And I remember uh, getting up one night and I really felt like the Holy Spirit said, share on this. And I guess it was so diametrically opposed to the culture of the church. I didn't realize it. But the next night before I got up to speak, the pastor got up and basically stood you up and said, you're welcome back here. And then started correcting uh, most everything I preached. He was like negating everything you'd said. Everything I preached the night before. He said, hey, as New Testament Christians, we don't have to fear God. God's not giving us a spirit of fear. And he started ripping off all these scriptures out of context. And he had confused the fear of the Lord with the spirit of fear. And um, basically, they let me know both at the restaurant and from the pulpit, you're not welcome back here. And I, I remember, which was amazing because he had you get up and preach after he denounced yeah, you. Yeah, that was kind of interesting. Was that was really the hard, probably one of the hardest messages I've ever preached. But I remember the next morning fe- feeling so so isolated. And now here I was, embraced by you, comforted by you, but I still felt isolated. I felt like, and I felt like I had hurt God's church. And I remember going out praying that morning, saying, "God, I've hurt your people." So just that ostrac ostrac. It's ostracizing, ostracizing me. Yeah. yeah. We can say shunning. It's Just easier. shunning me yeah. made me feel like I had damaged, hurt his people. And I had to work through that. And God, of course, really came to my comfort. I mean, I had to hear from him. But I can't, I can't even imagine what people go through when, you know, their, their, their friends in school who they see every single day ostracize them, shun them. Yeah. And it's now, mostly social media. Yeah, yeah, on social media. And yeah. and <clears throat> I, I was just told the other day, there's literally a girl who jumped off the bridge and her friend f- her friend actually shot her doing it. Videotaped, uh, videotaped it. Yeah, it. filmed it. And I don't know, that girl's it. probably going to have to answer of being an accomplished, but it was all over what her friends had said to her on social media. They had ostracized her, shunned her. And Lisa, it's it's serious because it's so opposed to what the scriptures say. Absolutely. I remember there was a particular um, particular pastor's wife when we were on staff at a church that was, man, I mean, she was just ruthless with me. It just... It, oh, I and, do remember And then this. I, would get, oh, yeah. I would get close with her again, and then she'd do it again. I'd be like, oh my gosh, she's done it again. I'd get yeah. close, and then she'd do it again. And I remember I said to myself, you know what? That's it. I am not getting reconciled to her again. She is just not safe. And God said to me, when you say, I will never, when you judge somebody, you say that they're never going to change. Therefore, you never have to be reconciled to them. And he said, is that what you want me to say about you? And I feel wow. like right now, we're those kind of people that we would rather cut people off because it feels safer for us rather than grow them, rather than have the hard conversations, rather than challenge the way they're thinking. And and I do know right now that it's a big challenge for uh, Christians because I think Christians are getting canceled left and right for actually just sometimes standing by a a biblical worldview. Well, you said something really powerful. Only Jesus is the one that's able to look at somebody and say, depart from me forever. Yeah. He's the only one that can do and, that. And that doesn't so happen while we're on earth. We judge somebody when you say, I, I can never be reconciled. Because you're never going to change. I don't ever have to be reconciled to you. That's yeah. scary because yeah. the Bible commands us to forgive, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven us. Suppose God did cancel culture with us. Adam and Eve commit treason against him. I mean, they, they are in the presence of his glory. They commit treason, flagrantly disobey what he told them not to do. And God could have said, Jesus, they chose the devil over us. Let's go over and start another universe. Let them all go to hell with the devil. And let's of course, create- they didn't know they were choosing the devil. They thought they were being like God apart from God. But yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. but I, I, they I believe... Cut off. They could have been cut off. And, and, and all Bible teachers, theologians in history call it the great treason. And because they committed high treason against God. God had, you know, they had chosen the enemy. And, and God could have, what I'm saying is God could have said, okay, let them all go to hell. We'll create another universe. That would have been cancel culture. And aren't you glad that he didn't do that with us? He chose not only to get us out of what we did, yeah. but he actually died yeah, to pay us. the price of what we did. So he didn't just say, okay, I forgive you. He went to the length of saying, I'm going to pay the awful, terrible penalty that only I can pay for you to get you out of this. 
so that we can be reconciled. Yeah, well, Jesus canceled our debt. That was the. That's he didn't the, cancel us. Yeah, he canceled can, our debt. Right, he canceled Correct. our debt, and I and I love that. You know, here's the thing, John. Um, and again, when we're talking about you're never going to change, therefore I don't have to be reconciled to you. We're not encouraging people to be in unhealthy relationships or anything like that. But we're saying you don't you don't cut people off. You have healthy boundaries. Yes. You, you maybe don't hang out anymore, but to slander and shame and destroy on social media is not okay. Um, you know, I, I had, uh, I had somebody, it was really interesting, uh, just recently, and this is kind of silly, but it, it's, it's a truthful thing. It just happened where, um, somebody had posted about, you know, possibly they were lifting the, the, um, mass mandate. And I said something like, Oh wait, when would that happen? And then somebody was like, you didn't stand up for Jesus. I stood up for Jesus on, on the black boxes and you didn't stand up for Jesus. And I was like, wait a minute. And she says, I unfollowed you. And I said, well, everybody is welcome to unfollow me whenever they want to unfollow me. But what in the world? Like there every other week, there is a new cause to get behind. And people somehow think by being keyboard warriors, they're standing up for Jesus. Well, they're not. Being hateful on social media is not standing up for Jesus, but having the hard conversations, loving your neighbor as yourself. Those are things that are going to actually make Christians look good. So here's the thing. I, I do think that we as Christians cannot live by the fear of being canceled. Like if we right. are speaking the truth in love and we get canceled, we need to actually be happy about that because Jesus said, rejoice and be exceedingly glad when people speak evil of you, but woe to you when all men speak well of you because that is what they did with the false prophets. So we were kind of promised that we would have hardship with people and their opinions. But the cancel thing, what you have a scripture I can see. Well, I'm thinking, you know, as you were speaking, it's yeah. like the Holy Spirit brought this up. Paul made this statement in Romans chapter 12, verse 18, do all that you can yeah. to live, live in peace. peace with everyone. Yeah. Now, as much you, as it's in your power is what the tr other translation says, how, I love. How do you do that? And our, our answer is found in Colossians. And I love this. Colossians chapter 3, verse 12, and this would go through verse 15. Since God chose you to be his holy people, he loves, you must clothe yourself with tender hearted mercy. Wow. And remember, mercy is when we don't get what we deserve. Mm, I right. thought that was grace. That's what everybody says grace is. Grace is when you. I know. I know. You, okay. <laughs> grace is an empowerment. With tender hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Make allowance. Now, this is how we do it. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive one another. Now, is there a time that cancel is appropriate? According to the scripture, absolutely yes. It's that same book of Wait, Romans. Can I, could, I had a couple of scriptures absolutely. I wanted to read as okay, well. Absolutely. Okay, because we have, we're seeing, I mean, we, we, you and I have talked about this with among ourselves, with many leaders, uh, other leaders, that God is sifting, He is shifting, yep. He is shaking, He's doing all sorts of things. And so when that happens, some people get put in different places, some people get removed from their place, and, it, it's, and it's God doing it. And, and sometimes He'll use people, sometimes He uses even evil to uh, execute some things into this earth to be like, hey, this this needs to get exposed or whatever. And we saw it was, you know, the the men in the boat that threw Jonah out and woke him up and said, come on, why aren't you crying out to your God? So anyway, but here's something I love in Galatians chapter one. It says, live creatively, friends. And I, I feel that. like we've gotten in the habit of living destructively. And this is God saying, That's really good. get creative, get creative. If someone falls into sin, and yes, this is the message paraphrase. So it's Galatians 6, 1, forgivingly restore him. So it says, you're going to have to be creative. You're going to want to be destructive. You're going to want to cancel. And God is saying, if someone falls into sin, forgivingly yeah. restore him, saving your critical comments for yourself. 
What? Wow. It's saving okay, your now, critical comments for yourself. Okay, so Eugene Peterson didn't write that when um, all this was going on. No. And but he it's said, like you might it's need... like the Holy Spirit <laughs> led him to yeah. actually prophesy what would be going on 20 years later. Right. He said you might be needing <laughs> forgiveness before the day's out. He's saying Wow. You and, and we all know that we we get what we sow. We need to sow mercy because we need mercy. It says, stoop down and reach out to those who are oppressed, share their burdens, and so complete Christ's law. If you think you are too good for that, wow. you are badly deceived. So he's saying, lift those that have fallen, help carry them, restore them, be creative, not destructive. And then he goes on to say, make a careful exploration of who you are and the work you have been given and sink yourself into it. It doesn't say, make a careful exploration of what everybody else is you know, doing. You know, something that I... Did I, you hear me? Because yes. there's a lot of people that are building their whole ministry on outing what they think other people aren't doing well enough instead of diving in to what God has entrusted them to do. So I just thought I would That's really highlight good. that a little further. And um, I just look at this, and it's basically the church almost being discipled by the world's behavior instead of the church being discipled by the word of God. It's really scary. So many Christians today just are not spending time in the word. Right. And when you spend time in the word and you start hearing what God says, it absolutely frees you from the way the world is going. You know, I look at so many things that have happened in, in society, on mainstream media, on mainstream, um, mainstream media, meaning uh, there's a particular golfer, Lisa, who about a year ago, made a really serious, stupid comment. Yeah. I mean, it was bad. Yeah. And before he was done with, or when he was done with the round, he got on the camera and he just said, I have done a horrible, horrible thing. So he owned it, you're saying. He said, I am so sorry. And I am so sorry to the people I offended by me making that comment that got picked up on it. And I, it really, really helped me to understand that I've got to address, I've got to address the way I look at things and so that something like that doesn't come out of my mouth. I mean, I was sitting there with my jaw dropped listening to this PGA, very top golfer say that. So well, you went from the horror of what he said. Heck, oh, I was, it was horrifying. And to, 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 to a, to, oh my gosh, this guy's really, this is a chance for him to learn. He's really, how out really of line it was. Humbling himself and apologizing, right? Okay. But what, what's grievous to me is his big, big sponsors, and they're known. I mean, these sponsors, if I said them, everybody know them canceled him the next day. And he had, he had wore their, their name on his shirts for years. And he was almost like the poster boy for that company. And I'm like, okay, we just sent a worse message to our society. A very grievous mistake was made, but a very sincere apology was made, yeah. but yet we still cancel. And that's, so that's, there's no hope once, once you've been judged, right. there's so, just no restoration. So we look at what Paul says. And when you got somebody who's, who's sinned, who's done something grievous, offensive uh, to God. All murdered Christians. Yeah, offensive to God, offensive to men. But they <laughs> repent. Yeah. Jesus said, if your brother sins against you seven times in a day and comes to you and sincerely repents, right. you are to release him from what he did. You aren't to penalize him. You are to forgive him. Because why? That humility. And I think, you know, Jesus makes this statement, Lisa. He said, the way we forgive is the way we're going to be forgiven. Listen to the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us today the way we have forgiven those who have offended us. So the way we give us this day our daily bread and forgive us. Okay, <laughs> I, I went right to it. You're right. You're right. You're 100%, honey. Thank you. You are 100% you. correct. It doesn't happen often, so I'm super excited that I'm right. So the way we forgive... Yeah. is the way we're going to be forgiven. Mm -hmm. So this is why I believe it's, it's Paul... It's the, the measure. Right. It's the measure. The measure we use yeah. to judge people yeah. is the measure that we're going to be judged. So yeah. to him who extends mercy shall receive mercy. So if who, we're harsh... He who judge shall be judged. Yeah, if, if we're harsh in our judgment, if we're quick in our judgment, yep. we're going to experience that. But now let's if ask the question. there's no hope in our judgment, yep. we're going to be judged that is way. Is there a time to cancel? And there is. But hey, yeah, and I, and I do... Um, yeah, I, I want to talk about that in the mix of that. Yeah. Okay. So, so we'll do no, that. No, we'll no, wait on no. That. Go ahead. No. Because I, right now I no, want to make sure no, that so, nobody's confused. No. Well, so here's the thing. Just last week, I watched as uh, two beautiful Christian women 
just jumped on another Christian woman and they felt like they were right to publicly say, we have questions about whether they're theologically correct or blah, blah, blah. And I, and so I know one of them. So I reached out to them directly and I said, did you go to that person? Privately. Did you go to them As first? Jesus said. And they said, no, because they're saying things publicly. I can publicly denounce them. How do you feel about that? Because I don't believe that we have permission or that that's a motive of love. Because I said to, I said to them when I read what they had written about them, I said to them, if your goal was to uh, bring these people into question, if your goal was to out them, then well done. But if your goal was to bring them into a conversation, or if you feel like they're wrong, restore them to correct theology, you've just slammed the door in their face. I mean, Jesus in Matthew 18, Lisa, tells us exactly what to do. He said, They said that's between people. No, let's, let's talk it through. He said, go to them privately. He said, then bring two or three leaders. And he said, then bring it publicly. But they're saying because the people say it publicly, no, I'm gonna, they I'm, can do, I'm, go right to public. So what I'm, do you think I want, about I that? I want to go, I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play out the scenario that would have been the higher way. Yeah. So if they would have went to that person privately and they went, oh my gosh, I really made a mistake. Or, that person, man, thank you. I, I was unclear that. That person then could have gone yep. publicly and said, I yep. want to ask you to forgive me. I said something that is wrong. Yep. I want to correct what I said. How much better is that for promoting unity and for restoring the confidence of people in relationships yeah. than for them to just flat out go straight public yeah. with it? So I would say, following Jesus' pattern, hey, go to them one-on-one. Hey, if that doesn't work, bring a couple others. If that doesn't work, then you're going to have to do it to the people that they did it to because you got to yeah. protect them, right? Yeah. So going into the book of James, there's a couple things I was just thinking because I feel okel. like I feel like James is like a super intense. I, I, feel, I, I love no, that I, book. No, of course you would, but I of mean, of course I would. Course, Wait a minute, you no, want you want to expand on that intent. one? No, you're super intense. <laughs> but he, like, so here's here and again, I'm reading from the message. James chapter two verse one says, "My dear friends, don't let public opinion influence how you live out our glorious Christ originated faith." So what he's saying, and, and this in context, he's saying, don't look how they're dressed. Don't put the people in the rich on the front thing. But here's the thing right now, we have more access to public opinion than we ever, ever had. True. And so right now I feel like we're forgetting that we're called to the royal rule of scripture, which is love others. The royal as, law of scripture. This yes. says rule. Rule? Oh, okay. This says royal rule. Okay, so I'm, I'm sorry. You're, message. you're in the message. Yeah, yeah I'm in the I message. Forgot. This is a, it's a rule here. It, yeah, it's so, a rule. Okay. Yeah. John doesn't always follow rules. He thinks there's suggestions, but he follows laws. Is that right? I've been Stop accused signs. of just the Stop opposite. Stop signs. Okay. I've been so it says, but it says, love others as you love yourself. All I know is for me, I would rather have someone believe the best of me Come to me first. Yeah. Ask me a question. Yeah. So that I can either gain clarity or, you know, explain myself. But when you just cut somebody off, it is, it's not helping anybody. Well, Lisa, you know, we, uh, this is, th- we, 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 we this can't stop. Happen. We, thought we this can't stop happen. this conversation. Yeah. Okay. So we got to pick it up next time. You know what I want to do next time? I want to go in depth okay. talking about when is it proper to cancel well, okay and yes. there, there's well, a time but the christian version of cancel. the christian version and yes. there is always i'm going to just give a little glimpse there's always a hope and a making a way for restoration always in other words it's not permanent but we'll talk about that next time hey this has been conversations with john and lisa and I just want to remind you please rate review and subscribe because what you do is you really make this program available to a lot of people if it helps you by just reviewing you are helping others to be able to say yeah i want i want to download Uh, conversations with John and Lisa. The other thing we're doing right now, it's kind of fun. We are doing a challenge for everyone to download Messenger X. Now, what is Messenger X? It is a multi-million dollar app that we have developed to disciple you. It has courses, it has books, it has praise and worship, it has children's programs, it has tons of stuff on there to, to, to bring you in a walk closer to Jesus. So you just go to the app store, type in Messenger 
X, no space between the R and the X, and then you just download it. If you have an Android, just go to Google Play and do it. If you just have a computer, hey, messengerx.com. But anyway, here's the best news, no charge. We are putting this in your life because we realize Jesus is coming soon. He needs a strong, glorious church. So we're doing everything we can to strengthen you and disciple you. And here's the challenge. We are asking you to find two people this week who don't have Messenger X and invite them maybe to do a study together or just, or just share tell the them about them. it and yeah. just share the app. You don't have to do a study. Just share the app, tell them about it, show them how to work it, and then you're going to be helping to disciple people. It's so fun. But anyway, this has been Conversations with John and Lisa. Thanks for listening to Conversations with John and Lisa. Let us know your thoughts by leaving a review. You can subscribe and share these episodes through Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. And while you're there, be sure to check out our other shows in the Messenger Podcast Network, including The Godmother with Lisa Bevere and Let's Talk About It with Sons and Daughters. You can also connect with John and Lisa through Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And don't forget, you can download the Messenger X app today in the App Store. Until next time.